Hi, I'm Dave Hilgendorf. Welcome to video six, Let God Be Your Promoter, part of a 14 video series based on the book, Jesus is at Work, Having Joy and Purpose at Your Current Job. In video five, next, find your assignment. We talked about some ways to answer the question of what God's personal divine work assignment is for you. In other words, what is God's will for your choice of career? In this video, I wanna take that thought a step further and to deal specifically with the situation you may be in where you are strongly questioning either your current career, your current job, or both. In the book, I shared part of my testimony where I had taken an eight-year detour from my engineering career to flip houses full-time, essentially trying to get rich. I ended up in a very bad place. Uh, I crashed and burned. I was broke financially, over a million dollars in debt, pretty much penniless after cashing out and burning through my 401k retirement fund to try and survive. I was also broke emotionally and spiritually, living in a dumpy garage apartment owned by my ex-girlfriend while I was clinically depressed and on antidepressant medication. Now, please bear with me now while I briefly walk through how my career has progressed since that very low point. I think it might give you some context for my advice and my thoughts on this whole question of should I stay or should I go? Uh, to, to quote a song which I had to look up actually because I didn't remember the, who did that song. It's The Clash. Um, from that low point in my life, um, I was invited by a friend to a new church. I became born again, met and married my second wife, Carrie, we got on the same page with the biblical view of finances after taking Dave Ramsey's financial peace class together. And I went back to being an engineer while at the time, same time uh, filing for bankruptcy. Now my first job after that whole experience was far from perfect and I had to deal with a lot of negativity and foul language and a micromanaging boss. But I had a new sense of gratitude and contentment for that job because it offered a financial stability that I hadn't had for a long time. And I was on fire for Jesus. It was actually during that year that I decided to start writing a book about how my relationship with Jesus fit into my daily work. Uh, after about a year, my job was eliminated there and I was let go. Um, but I had a, a surreal kind of peace in the face of uncertainty yeah, as did my wife. Um, in fact, she laughed when I gave her the news and she just said, well, I can't wait to see what God has for us next. Um, I got a new job um, with uh, a good pay increase. We had to move out of state into North Carolina. Um, I really loved that job. And um, while I was there, I continued to, li to live out a newfound perspective on what it meant to live out my faith at my job. And I finished writing my book. Uh, but about four years later, though, I was faced with uncertainty again when my company announced that they were going to have to eliminate 10% of their salaried employees and asked for volunteers before they started just uh, letting people go. So we didn't know what the outcome would be, but my wife and I prayed about it, decided to take the uh, small severance that they offered and look for something else. So with a leap of faith, um, I ended up getting another job right away. Um, and during the next four years, I continued to pursue this issue of faith at work. I published my book, Jesus is at Work. I continued blogging and I launched the Spirit Led Men at Work podcast where I started interviewing men from different occupations about this issue of living out their faith at their work. This was an interesting period because although I was blessed in many ways, I was all very unhappy <laughs> with that job, uh, more unhappy than I had ever been with any job. The work schedule and stress was so bad that it, it just impacted my overall attitude and my bad attitude negatively affected my family and my home life. And this was challenging personally, but it also challenged my thoughts up to that point on the issue of quitting. I had written and spoken about the importance of staying where you are and trusting God, even if you're unhappy, or at least making quitting a last resort. And I felt like a hypocrite because I truly did not have joy and purpose and it didn't seem to be getting any better. So four years into that job, and at the prompting of my wife and a recommendation for a new opportunity from a trusted friend, I sought out another position at a, a different company, um, again, for a um, praise God for a pay increase, 
and in a much better work environment. Um, we didn't have to move, and so we got to keep our little hobby farm here that we love so much. Um, and my commute, uh, the only negative I could think of was that my commute was extended about to about an hour one way. I tell you all this to say that on this question of what to do when you're unhappy and uncertain about where you're working, I can quote you what the Bible says about this, and, and I'll try to do some of that. But based on my experience, I have a new appreciation and openness for different views on this. When I first wrote the book, I was feeling the pain that had resulted from quitting too quickly. You know, giving up on my first marriage and my first engineering job. Um, I was also feeling the blessing that had come from being fired from my first job after returning to engineering and sticking with that job despite some tough circumstances. And based on those two things, I urge the reader to make quitting the last option and to stay faithful where you're at. Now, I still believe, as I said in the book, that when we feel like we need to change circumstances, God may instead want us to stay exactly where we are and let him change us instead. He may want us to grow and mature through some struggles. He may want us to be impacted by someone or something that we would otherwise miss if we made a change. He may want us to impact someone else where we are. Or he may want us to choose to stay where we are and then he will promote us in a supernatural way so that you and others will know that it came from him. In other words, it may be that he wants you to quit your job, but just not yet. Now, I still believe all of that, but I'm also absolutely convinced that my recent choice to quit was God's will. I say that because I am truly pursuing God, and I have felt an undeniable peace and joy resulting from this recent move, and it has made a much better made me a much better husband and father. And in addition, I have a clear assignment at this job relating to certain work relationships um, uh, that I have had in the past. I'm talking about a divine assignment. And, and due to the longer commute, my, my God time, including prayer and Bible time, has significantly improved. So, um, But I would like to share an inter interesting story about this. When I quit my old job and started telling people at work that I was leaving, a Christian friend of mine at work shared how he had come very close to quitting himself for many of the same reasons that I was quitting. What changed for him, though, was at the last minute, he had an undeniable sense that God wanted him to stay where he was. His circumstances had not changed. He was still de dealing with a lot of things he didn't like, but after a lot of prayer with other Christian men, he just knew God was not done with him yet at his current job. So how do we know what to do when faced with a job that we're unhappy with and lacking in joy and purpose? I would start by saying that we should not try to figure it out all at once, but rather go step by step. Look to Psalm 119.105, which says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. This passage to me shows us how God guides us. He, sh he shows us what we need to take the next step, but doesn't give us the whole picture. Now those small steps can cumulatively add up to one big step. And in my experience, that's how God usually wants us to progress. Mark 4.28 says, First the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. <clears throat> when I jumped ship from my engineering career to flipping houses, I had a godly man in my life who challenged me about the move because I didn't have any savings or a proven income from, um, for this new venture. But I didn't want to listen to any counsel contrary to what I wanted to do. I wanted what I wanted and I wanted it now. Not only was I not seeking counsel, I wasn't willing to listen to it when it was thrust upon me. Proverbs 11.14 says where there's no counsel, people fail, but in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Changing jobs or careers is a big deal, and if you're struggling with this decision, I feel for you because I've been there many times. Um, and just to finish up on my last thought, I mean, I, that's the other piece of advice on this. Take, take it one step at a time and seek counsel um, with this decision. Now, I hope some of what I've said has helped you. I don't believe there's a cookie-cutter answer to this question of changing your job and career. And the best thing we can do is to try to be familiar with 
understand, and ultimately have the mind of Christ to help us make these decisions. If you look in Romans 8, it talks too about how the Holy Spirit will help help us pray. So even if we don't know how to pray, to ask God for his will with a big decision like this, you know, ask the Holy Spirit to pray on, on your behalf. The Bible says he will do that. Now, with the next video, number seven, we will do um, just that as far as learning to have the mind of Christ as we begin part three of this series, which is titled, Think Like Jesus. And it'll be started with a video called, What Jesus Thinks About Work. See you then.